This December, countries from around the world are meeting in Paris to commit to a new international climate change agreement. As part of this, New Zealand will put forward a nationally determined contribution to reduce greenhouse gas emissions that will apply after 2020. Our contribution will communicate the ambition and action we commit to to reduce emissions. It will also take into account our national circumstances. As well as an emissions reduction target, our contribution may also outline supporting policies and targets in specific sectors. So why are we doing this? Global greenhouse gas emissions are rising. As a consequence, we are facing dangerous temperature increases, sea level rise and intense storms and droughts. This will affect the quality of our lives and those of our tamariki and mokopuna. Climate change is truly a global problem and all nations, big and small, need to act collectively to address it. The ultimate goal is to avoid dangerous temperature increases of more than 2 degrees. This will require a global transition to a low-carbon world, where we no longer rely on fossil fuels, we use energy more efficiently and we take advantage of new and innovative technologies. But we are not there yet. Momentum is building worldwide in support of the new agreement, with many countries already signalling their emissions reduction targets, including the three largest global emitters, the United States, China and the European Union. We expect to announce New Zealand's contribution well in advance of the Paris meeting in December. Our contribution will need to carefully balance the costs on New Zealand households and businesses with taking ambitious action to tackle climate change. Our contribution will also be compared with the action of other countries and whether it represents more action to reduce emissions than what we have committed to in the past. New Zealand has unique national circumstances which create challenges for setting our contribution. We are a small, lightly industrialised country with a rapidly growing population. Nearly half our emissions stem from the agricultural sector and there are few ways to reduce these emissions in the near term. We have one of the highest levels of renewable electricity generation in the world, leaving less room to reduce emissions in this area. These factors mean it is generally more difficult and expensive for us to reduce our domestic emissions compared with many other developed countries. But we also have some opportunities to seize. We are in a good position to leverage off our high level of renewable electricity generation, for example by reducing emissions through the use of electric vehicles, and by producing low-carbon goods. We have an efficient primary sector and world-leading research aimed at finding new technologies to reduce agricultural emissions. And our land is well suited to forestry, which can offset some of our emissions. Our contribution will be a commitment that commences in 2021 and will run for many years beyond that. Looking that far ahead is difficult, and no doubt things will change, including what is economically and technologically possible. We have to think about this when deciding on what we commit to. This is just the beginning of a conversation on New Zealand's response to climate change after 2020. Over the coming years, we will need to review our domestic policy settings to ensure we meet our target. The contribution we put forward and the actions we take to achieve it are important decisions affecting all New Zealanders. So it's important we work together to set the course for reducing our emissions and transitioning to a low-carbon future. For more information, go to the Ministry for the Environment's website.